100 words per minute 100 words per minute eh and you sir ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಕ್ಕಿ ಓಕೆ ಅದೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಯ್ನೆ ಹಾ 100 ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಎಪಿ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ 59 ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ನಂಬರ್ 3 100 ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಎಪಿ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ 1959 ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ನಂಬರ್ 3 ನೌ ರೈಟ್ ಡೌನ್ ಎವರ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಸಿಟಿ 24 ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಆನ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ affection and kindness that i feel over we will mud i have been trying to visit the different states in the country and this is the first state in the south which it has been possible for me to visit as president of the republic of india i am really happy that i have seen something of this beautiful part of the country you are all aware that within the last 3 years we had such tremendous changes in the country those who worked for swaraj in the years gone by could hope for nothing better than what we have achieved it is now for us to maintain the freedom that we have won and to make our people prosperous and happy our freedom will have no meaning unless its fruits are enjoyed by every individual that inhabits this vast land and unless every individual feels that he is better in every respect a great responsibility has been cast upon all and what i want you common men and women of this country to realize is that it is no use leaving things to what is known as the government with adult franchise we now have a system in which every individual has his share in the government we can no longer say that the government is something different from the people at large every individual high and low must make his or her contribution to the betterment and prosperity of the masses we have during these 3 years been passing through rather difficult times you in the south who are so far away from the places where we have had such a tremendous difficulties may not fully realize the vastness of the catastrophe you cannot perhaps appreciate the magnitude of the problem which our government had to face on the very morrow of its existence vast masses of uprooted humanity both in the west and in the east had to move from their hut and home leaving everything behind in such of a place where they could live with safety and honor it was not a case of a few people from the west alone now known as western pakistan not less than 5 million people perhaps more than that came to india some time later a very large number not less than 3 and 1/2 million moved from east bengal it was not easy to rehabilitate this vast mass of humanity and although the government has been doing its best it is too early yet to say that we have succeeded in our task the progress in the west has been considerable and so far as the rural population is concerned it may be said that practically the whole of the population 
has now been settled on land, but they do not all have houses to live in. The town's people have had greater difficulties to face. The agriculturist, when given land after he had moved from West Punjab to East Punjab, could begin life in his own way more or less as before. The townsman who was doing some kind of trade or business, however, found greater difficulties in adjusting himself to his new surroundings. Trade and business in West Punjab employed not only the Hindus and Sikhs, but also the Muslims. Many of these enterprising people have managed to start life afresh, although with some difficulty. The government has been giving them all possible help. Thousands and thousands of houses have been built at government expense for housing them in growing townships. These people are working and building up houses for themselves. Similar work is being done in West Bengal, where also large numbers have moved from East Bengal. The rehabilitation and resettlement of these people has been the greatest of the problems government has had to face. Perhaps we are now nearing and end of this problem, although it is still too early to say that we have actually dealt with it completely. There have been other problems confronting our government. We have had difficulties over food, which you also have been experiencing as much as, if not more than, people in other parts. Even before the partition, we used to import large quantities of food grains. It used to come mostly from Burma, where they have a surplus of rice. Since the war, difficulties have arisen. Burma is not able to produce as much as she used to do, to do before. A great source of supply was thus very largely cut off. Of course, Burma is now coming up again with larger and larger production, but it has not yet reached its pre-war level. This compelled us to import large quantities of other food grains from different parts of the world. We in the North regret it, but it cannot be helped. In the South, you are being supplied partially with wheat and other grains to which you are not ordinarily accustomed. Unfortunately, that cannot be helped.